Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. On the bench today I have my own docking station. It's a Targus and it's model Dock 182. It's a docking station which also has a power delivery. I use it here in the workshop with my laptop so that I only need one USB-C cable and the laptop is charging and also connecting to all the devices. Well, the other day it died completely. It's completely dead. I think it's shorted. So I really would like to have it working because right now I have lots and lots of cables coming out of my laptop so that's what exactly what we're gonna do today let me thank today's sponsor PCB way and now let's see if I can open it up first thing first because I don't see screws and hopefully we can find an easy solution for it let me show you what the problem is so this is the power supply and I think this power supply is outputting 20 volts and I got 20 volts out of it now if I plug it up in the Targus here at the back, where it says in. Um, I don't really see anything. I think there's supposed to be a light or anything, but again, I plugged it with my computer. There's no activity whatsoever, no network, no nothing. Uh, but most importantly, if I check the power supply again now, let's say it's dead. So either there's a short with the Targus or the power supply is faulty. It's kind of difficult to test the power supply because I haven't got anything that fits into this very big plug. But I can tell you this, I have uh, more or less an identical power supply because this is a replacement. My previous targets failed and it was replaced with this one. And the power supply is more or less the same. I tried the working power supply into this and the power supply is doing exactly the same. So I know there is, well, there should be a short into the targets and to get the power supply back up, I just need to power cycle it for a few seconds. And when I power it back up, I think, it should read 20 volts again. Yep. Yeah. So um, let's assume that we have a short within the Targus. Now I need to find a way to open it up because I don't see a screw here unless there's some plastic clips. Let me fiddle with it for a second. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Aha, uh -huh, yes, there we go. Yes, well, there is a capacitor here close to the um, power connector and it's there, there's a short. And to be honest, I think I see something on that capacitor. Is that gonna be like the simplest and fastest repair of the whole YouTube? Shall we have a look under the microscope? This is the DC in connector. This is the DC out, because this also has facility to connect something else. And and I see this, I mean, um, I mean, that's a broken capacitor to me. Obviously, if I check for shorts, I have shorts all over the board now, because obviously I have short on this capacitor here but also I guess I have a short here. Also a short here. I mean, everything on that circuit is gonna be shorted. The fun thing is to find the actual shorted component. So, um, shall we inject some voltage or shall we just move this capacitor away and see if by any chance is that one? I mean, it looks so broken. Uh, that to me is the problem. Well, I'm curious to check with the thermal camera. So let's take a look. My bench power supply is set to one volt, 500 milliamps. You never know. Uh, let's turn on the thermal camera and take a look. To be honest, this is probably a waste of time. Now I'm looking closely. I think I see some burn marks here. So anyways, I got the thermal camera out. <laughs> let's, uh, let's inject some voltage and see what happens. Okay, uh, power supply is limiting. And do I see something? It's probably very little, 500 milliamps at one volt. Yeah, not really enough. So let's try more current or more voltage. I don't know. Two volts, 700 milliamps. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And <laughs> the alcohol has evaporated. What about thermal camera? Don't see much in there. 
it's interesting how the alcohol trick on this occasion has given uh, is giving better results than the thermal camera. I was not expecting that. I mean, with alcohol, it's, it's pretty obvious. Look at that. I'm just uh, injecting voltage now. It takes a few seconds and you can clearly see the alcohol uh, evaporating from the capacitor itself. Fair enough, it takes a few more seconds than I thought, but there we go. But I don't see much, okay, now I can, no, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, that is a reflection. That's a reflection on my hand. It should be glowing on thermal camera. That's interesting. It's interesting that you can barely see that glowing with a thermal camera. Well, I guess, you know, this input is rated for 20 volts. So I'm being very, very conservative. And right now my power supply says 0 0.36 volts. Obviously there's a short and 800 milliamps. So I don't know. I, I think again, it's pretty obvious from the uh, alcohol that this is our problem. Uh, that's kind of new to me. I thought the thermal camera would be a much better solution every single time. Let's remove that capacitor. And, uh, and let's see if the short goes away. This is probably my worst soldering shown on camera. First, I should have cleaned that tip. But anyways, I went ahead with my usual method of adding a blob of solder without using hot air. It usually works totally fine without having to struggle with the hot air. Well, it didn't work. Yes, this part of the PCB is full of ground and power planes, so the heat gets dissipated quickly, but I wasn't expecting that. So after a while I added some low melt solder, that would do the trick in a moment. Except it didn't. How weird is that? Only after more struggling did I decide it was time to use another iron, and that worked like a charm. And look at that brown disaster my flux left behind, which happened to be genuine Amtec on this occasion. So sorry for the bad example of soldering here, but no damage was done and we can now check whether the short is still there. Before we continue, a quick shout to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Whether your project requires a PCB, a 3D print, metal sheet fabrication or CNC machining, well, PCBWay is your stop. If you follow the channel, you know I've been using PCBWay for quite some time. I've always been happy with the quality of the products and the customer service. And the 3D printed CPU trays I've recently ordered are absolutely stunning. So take a look at PCBWay.com, the link is also down below in the description. And let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring my videos on my channels, because their help makes these videos possible. Now, let's continue with this Targus dock. Right, that took a bit more than I thought. Uh, must be obviously it's full of ground planes in that area. Has the short gone, most importantly? And the short is gone. The short is gone. Wow, that was the, <laughs> that was the fastest and simplest repair of all time. <laughs> Yeah, that was our problem. So it was definitely this capacitor. And once again, very, very simple. Now, I have no idea what kind of value the capacitor was. Let me refocus. But it's clearly across the power supply. So that's ground. We, you can see it's obviously continuing. So it's coming here to this pad. And this is the positive of the connector. And somehow, I guess it goes through these wires. Not this one, this one. There we go, through this capacitor. So it's just, uh, is it like a smoothing capacitor? Would you like an ice cream? So it's either a smoothing capacitor or maybe it's there just to absorb some spikes or noises or whatever. All right, having spoken with my expert, DJ Mark 78 as usual, link is down below in the description. Uh, we think, well, he thinks that these might be a 100 nanofarad capacitor, which is usually used as a filter on the supply stage. And it also happens to be basically the only one I have, because this is exactly the same size and also rated for 100 volts, which is plenty. So let's install it.
and it's all good. So let's remove that little voltage injection thing and then we can test it. Time to test, will it work? Let me power up the power supply and let's plug it in. Three, two, one, go. No, yes, three, two, one, go. Yes, <laughs> there is a light. It's very faint, uh, but I think there is, um, there is some sort of diffuser here on the panel. Yeah, here, there's a little diffuser. So yeah, it's definitely working. You won't be able to see it. <laughs> There we go, we have our light and that's it, to be honest, that's all this thing can do. Uh, what can I do to show you? I can charge my mobile, I guess. There we go, charging. 12% actually needs to be charged. Perfect, <laughs> this is actually working fantastic. And as usual, is this little tiny thingy here, which is, stopping the whole thing, preventing the whole thing from working. Uh, how much electronics are we throwing away nowadays and in the past, of course, that only needs a tiny little component like that? Well, most of them, I would say. Let me put it back together and we'll test it. I'm gonna give it to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back. So that was probably the fastest repair I've ever done. Open it up, the capacitor is there in front of you with the scorch mark, replace it and it works. Which is great because it's a great tool. I only plug one cable USB-C into my laptop and I have charging and everything else. Though I have to say that Targus is a bit temperamental. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't in terms of USB and charging and have to unplug it and replug it and restart and that kind of stuff. Also, the Ethernet port of that dock is supposed to be one gigabit and there is a 10 gigabit connection between the laptop and the dock itself, but somehow it doesn't go to one gigabit. I have to use an external dongle because it just doesn't work and Targus support weren't really able to help me out. But anyways, it works and I have quite a few USB ports that I can use with just one cable going to the laptop. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short and simple repair. And if you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and also consider subscribing to this channel and my second channel if you like this kind of things. Don't forget I'm on Facebook and on Patreon and the name of my supporters are scrolling at the side of the screen. Thank you very much for your support. There is a free tier, so no excuse. The link is down below in the description. But if you don't want to support support me on Patreon, which is understandable, maybe you can buy me a coffee and the link is also down below in the description. If you don't want to buy me a coffee, which is also very much understandable, well, I hope you enjoy the video. That's it. Thank you for watching. I wish you a great day and hope to see you soon here on my channels for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.